Uh, welcome to Clean Up Live Broadcast. I'm Sam, your host for today's topic. And today we're going to talk about something uh, different. Well, recently we have been talking about our new uh, new NAS, the new models, and some extended devices. But today we're going to talk about some special usage. It's RDX. So uh, today we're going to talk about our TVS AA2BR that integrates with the Tamper RDX removable disk. So we uh, will know that uh, how can we use the RDX to combine the whole system and what kind of uh, industry that will use the RDX and the advantages and the benefits of using the RDX. So uh, let's get into the slide. And sorry, today we have Dan as our PM because he knows a lot of the RDX and what kind of industry can use that. So uh, he will tell us what is RDX and uh, what kind of machine, what kind of mask, uh, NAS can use RDX and why we choose this RDX and then how can we combine the whole system and then make the whole system easier and how can we bring in benefits on the workflow of each industry and enterprises. So, welcome Dan. Oh, Sam, uh, nice to meet you. And nice to introduce our TVS 882 BR mm -hmm. to everybody. Uh, as you said, TVS 882 BR is uh, actually it's not a new model, it's mm -hmm. an old model uh, we launched in last year. Uh, we just um, implement the RDX to this model and to give you more function and more yes. stability. Yeah, okay. so let's get into the slides and we can see the topic for today is the <coughs> TVSAA2BR, which yes. is a pre, uh, original model. Yes, right? it's an original model. That, that integrates with the Tender RDX removable disk. So uh, later we will talk about what is RDX, how can it be removable? and the removable disk system to provide greater data protection. Then we will talk about how can the RDX bring you a greater data protection. So first, let's get into the machine. Uh, this is the TVSAA2BR and the TVSAA2BRT3. Yes. As usual, I think the T3 means Thunderbolt Yes, 3, correct, right? yes. And then we can see what, what are the differences, like the extend NAS functionality to RDX and Blu-ray, which means the AA2BR can also support uh, CD device to bring Blu-ray. Yes, you can disc. support CD, DVD, mm -hmm. and Blu-ray disc. Okay, and then I I see like Thunderbolt icon down there and the Intel Core i7 and i5. So there are two SKU. Yeah, there are two SKU. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and the next is, okay, this is really important. Uh, RDX, basically in average user, some some people might not ever know that RDX and what that will be and what how can people use that. So these are the three reasons why the users might use the RDX or the Blu-ray discs. Yeah. First is like <coughs> legal requirements for, can you give us an example? Yeah, because uh, we know some um... Uh, when you when you manage your data, mm -hmm. maybe you have some different kinds of demands. Uh, something like when you uh, work in a government or a bank or something military military basis, yes. uh, the documents has legal requirements of documents retention. Yes. Yeah. Some documents you you are asked to store it uh, for maybe 50, 50 years, and uh, but this data you are not using very frequently, mm -hmm. so. You maybe you need a Blu-ray disc to archive this data for a very long time, mm -hmm. and also we know uh, sometimes you have some confidential data. Yes. Uh, something like your personal detail yes. or your uh, physical checklist, mm -hmm. and uh, the hospital will use this to store your data for you. Okay. Because when you store pick up your data to a Blu-ray disc, yes. uh, it's not be changeable. Yes. So it's very safe to secure your personal detail. Understand. And also, um, we all have some data you want to delete it, but uh, sometimes you just don't want to keep it, but you don't use it very often. So it's a very good choice, to, it's a good option to pick up the data to this. Okay, so this is the three reasons why we will choose to use <coughs> Blu-ray. Also, the RDX is some kind of the same concept of the Blu-ray or 
uh, any difference? Between? Yeah, it's a kind of Blu-ray. I mean, in the uh, in the usage, in the purpose, uh, it's also a storage device. Mm -hmm. uh, we say it's removable disk storage, which means uh, there is a two point uh, two point five inch uh, HDD inside this case. Okay. So it brings uh, our highly uh, highly portable and dust and shelf proof and also highly reliable. Mm -hmm. So which means you can uh, transfer this uh, data to uh, RDS and pass to your friends, pass to your co-works, uh, to uh, very easy and very helpful. Okay, so uh, we will talk about what kind of industry will use the RDX or the CD Blu-ray reader. And next we are going to okay. check what, why can uh, QNAP Plus provide you a good storage solution? Like we now can now we know that we can use uh, AA2 to give you the Blu-ray disc yes. or some special industry that can use the RDX, right? And we also have a bay of hard disk inside of the NAS that can give you a good storage and protection yes. with snapshot and other thing, right? Yes. Of course, we have <coughs> the backup solution, no matter yes. is uh, backup to the NAS or to the other NAS or inside of the NAS or any other cloud that yes. you can connect to. So these are the four main reasons that we can provide you a good storage solution in any of your data, right? Yep. Mm. So let's check all the specs of the AA2. Right here we see we have BR, BRT3, and maybe we have something else. Mm -hmm. At the left hand side is the Blu-ray burner bundle, so it's ODD. Yeah, it's ODD series. It's bundle one uh, Blu-ray burner mm -hmm. inside. If you want to use the Blu-ray applications, mm -hmm. you can choose this model. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to install, <coughs> if you want to install your uh, your devices to the to uh to to the machine, you can choose TVS at eighty two BR. Some <coughs> And if we want to uh, use the RDX, you can choose our TVS 82 br RDX mm -hmm. series. Okay. Yeah, and uh, you, you said uh, 82 br T3, uh, we bundle uh, four Thunderbolt 3 ports. Okay, so the BRT3 basically is provided for a Mac user, right? Uh, Mac user or Windows user. Okay. It's good. <coughs> okay, so uh, next uh, we can see uh, we have USB 3 connection and the 5.25 inch SATA connection. Yes. So both of these two, like cassette or cartridge, can put inside of the NAS or something. Uh, actually, you can because we have a 5. Point, uh, 5, 5. 25 inch SATA mm -hmm. port, SATA bay in our 82 br mm -hmm. So you can insert the 5. Point to a twenty-five inch to mm -hmm. our NAS directly, mm -hmm. or you want you can connect to USB three point zero mm -hmm. connection okay. to USB three point zero RDS. So basically, the three main points for the the removable disk is first is portable design, computer yes. file sharing, yes, and then we can use the cassette, uh, so use the RDX or the USB connection yes. to pick up all the function. Yes. Uh, sorry, all the data. Yeah. And then it supports the warm, like write once and read many. So I uh, put I upload the data into the RDX and then I can just transfer transfer it without internet and all the other department can read yeah, and all, download. Yeah, all, uh, they can read and download but they cannot change the data in the RDX. So it's a function to secure your data be become unchangeable. So that is an authority uh, function, or that is the original function. Uh, it's a, actually it's a software function, and um, uh, our model colleagues will introduce the software applications later. Okay, sure. So let's take a look at the removable disk drive. That is the RDX. So uh, it has a wide range of the storage capacity from five gigabyte to four TB. Four terabytes. Yeah. That is the uh, we we have a higher storage or lower storage skew. Uh, actually, we have low storage because mm -hmm. uh, five hundred gigabytes to four terabytes is the uh, most popular storage mm -hmm. demands for users. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, we have one uh, one hundred sixty mm -hmm. and uh, three hundred twenty. Okay, yeah. and um, 
I think the the biggest storage is up to five terabytes, but it's not really easy to buy it. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's. Uh, okay. So we have two description of the disk. So the left side is the best of tape because it has four advantages, like it's movable, portable, and we can support long up archiving life because like you said for some special requirement military or hospital they need the to whole government mm -hmm. department yeah, and it's rock Patrick and then cost effective I wonder how uh, 2.5 inch charges can be cost effective <coughs> as I said the RTS uh, disk is very strong mm -hmm. and uh, it's shot proof and dust free mm -hmm. so which means when you don't need to have a special package mm -hmm. to transfer it Mm -hmm. uh, compared with the uh, HDD or SSD, okay. so which means you you can save more more cost mm -hmm. when transport transporting the, the the cartridge. Sure. So uh, it's a uh, it uh, support random provide random access performance. Yeah, the advantage of this. Mm -hmm. So uh, the RDS cartridge combine both advantage okay. of tape on disk. And by you said the uh, software function. It support the work, so uh, the data reliability is very high. Yes, yeah, very good. Okay, and the rapid capacity grow. Okay, sure. And uh, let's take a comparison of the external drive <coughs> and the RDX. Right here, we can see no matter is from the stability, stability to the expand storage space. Well, RDX looks like it's better than the external drive because it has it has a, 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 like a, like a protection. Well, but I have a RDX right here, and uh, it's like an old small cassette that we used several several years ago. several years ago. So basically, the SSD is stored inside of the of the like the the, the, the box or something. So uh, shock and dust proof. Yes, and portability because I can just put it into any random bag or. No. Luggage or something. Or just put it into your bag, your pocket. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, let's go back to the slides. And we see here is a very important uh, function: the segmented backup. Yes. Which means if I have a very big yeah. file, like even even two hundred gigabytes or maybe five hundred, six hundred. Yeah. And if I'm doing the backup and the cassette is full. The software function will help us to uh, do the segmented backup into the next RDX, right? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. And this function is implemented on our QTS, uh, in our, our QTKG. Okay. So our colleagues will introduce this one, this function later. Okay, sure, no problem. Okay, so uh, this is the, <coughs> like the cycle of how can we use the RDX. Yeah. So, from media one, uh, we pick up the data to RDS cartridge, and yeah. then uh, without internet, we send into outside location for read. Yeah, and then to the third side for read. Yeah, and then to the main office for read. For uh, actually, you can read and write right. because yeah, that at is the same time because main it's, office. yeah, many office. Mm -hmm. So uh, why we why we up. I would say media location mm -hmm. because RDS is very popular in media industry oh, really? because um you know some uh, media me media data you don't want to transfer it by internet because the data is very large. If you mm -hmm. use internet to transfer your data, it takes so long time. And mm -hmm. sometimes uh, uh when uh, for example is power power breakdown mm -hmm. or internet breakdown, the data is is missing. Oh. So sometimes when media industry they they prefer to use traditional way, I just put my media 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 work to the RDS and I hire a car to deliver deliver the party to another office. And another office forwards they put their their works their jobs to RDS and it's a it's a cycle. Then go back to main office. Okay, yeah. so we can keep using the same RDX, right? Yes. So uh, that is why we said it's cost effective because for one RDX you can use it for many many times. Yeah, for many many times. Yeah, even if you just want to save some data and put it for a long time, you can also use an RDX because the protection for the hard disk is 
I think it's quite enough, quite good enough. Yeah. Right? Okay. So you need to pay extra cost to mm -hmm. uh, protect. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So next is we can see the different hardware skill for the AA2. Like we have i5, i7, and uh, oh, the CPU processor is really good. Yeah, it's seventh generation Core Series Intel. Yeah. Okay. This is really good. And there is nice, uh, nice generation Intel HD graphics inside it. And right here we can see that the maximum of the DDR4 memory can support sixty-four. Yeah, it's dual mm -hmm. channel. We and we have both uh, memory slots. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. This, this is a really good machine with high hardware level, I think. Yes. So, since we have the CPU and processor and the RAM right here, of course, we are going to check how fast the read and write. Yeah. And here we have uh, two uh, testing for MacBook Pro and the gaming notebook for Windows. And here we can see all of the read and write are about 1,000 giga, oh, sorry, 1,000 megabyte. Per yeah, second, right? Yeah, over. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we can see here, right, uh, the right hand side, the Windows Gaming Notebook, the read speed is even reaching the 2 gigabyte per second. Yeah. Per second, huh? per so second. the speed is really high. And the read and write all over uh, 1 gigabyte. And for MacBook, is that under uh, Thunderbolt? Yeah, it's under Thunderbolt. Okay, so we can see the write speed is also reaching 1.5 gigabyte per second. Yeah. yeah. So it's from the NAS to the... Yeah, from PC to NAS is a uh, uh, two-way. Okay, so my mistake, I was saying that the, the write and read speed for the RDX, but I need to fix that, is the Thunderbolt 3. Yes. Transmission speed. Yeah. So basically, it is, uh, I have introduced several Thunderbolt NAS okay. or NAS with Thunderbolt. The transmission speed, all of the models I have introduced were not as fast as this one. Yeah. So by the CPU, mm -hmm. by the DDR4 RAM. Yeah, by memory, by CPU. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the main reason why the Thunderbolt can have such a high transmission speed for the AA2. So if you are looking for a really high speed transmission, you can consider about our PBS AA2. Yeah, especially in media industry because mm -hmm. the data is always very large. Yeah. If you can, you, if you have such a fast mm -hmm. transmission speed, uh, it will improve your work efficiency. Sure. So next, let's check on the front and the rear panel of this AA2. As usual, <coughs> we have eight hard disk slots and right here at the right hand side, LED display, and then Air intake, power button, quick punch. Yes, no, that's right. quick copy button yeah. with three point one, three one. Yeah, and then you can see in the left hand side we mm -hmm. have uh, we have a five five point twenty five inch SATA bay. Yes, and um, you can choose to insert uh, connect your RDX or your Blu-ray burner. Mm -hmm. So the RDX or Blu-ray burner is made by choice when you order the AA two. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. Or can can we change? By yourself? Ah, sure, sure. You can, you can, you can change it to uh, your old equipment, mm -hmm. your old RDS or old full equipment to this one, this machine. Sure. And the SATA cable is pre-installed. Okay. So, which means you don't need to buy any other accessory or, mm -hmm. or installation kit. Okay. Uh, sure. Good. So, the rear panel is uh, the real important part right here because we, we can see here we have many many other slots and expansion uh, space. At the left hand side we have two 6.3 millimeter mic in which means we can use a better microphone to send our audio inside. Uh, uh, if you remember we have a very popular application is uh, it's a uh, karaoke. Ocean so, KTV. Yeah, Ocean KTV. So you can uh, connect your microphone uh -huh. and uh, put the songs into mouse and ensure karaoke. Okay. And then we also have one, uh, one three point five millimeter light out, so you can connect to your own speaker. Yeah. And here we have four gigabit yeah. RJ forty five connectors, so you can share to four people. And then most of all, three HDMI. Does it support four K? Yeah, support four K Ultra mm -hmm. HD. Yeah. Uh, so you can, uh, so can three four K screen use 
all the yeah, HTML. Yeah, sure. You can right? choose to you can choose mirror or extension, mm -hmm. and also you if you are working in media industry, you can preview your 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 mm -hmm. work work result uh, by connecting to a 4K monitor. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, we have four USB 3.1 Type A. Yes. And three smartphones, so the temperature issue is not a problem. It's not a problem. Yeah. And two built-in speakers, and then uh, the power. And at the left up hand side, we have three PCI slots. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll leave this part to you. Okay. So we have three PCI slots, and uh, we have two generation three by four and one generation three by eight. And I will introduce you how to use these PCI slots to uh, extend your functionality by connecting our uh, network card or something like a wireless card. Okay. And as, as, I, as I said, at 82 prt 3 it pre-installed mm -hmm. uh, to Thunderbolt cards. Mm -hmm. uh, it has two Thunderbolt 3 ports for each, on each card. Yeah. So some, uh, BRT3, we have four Thunderbolt 3 uh, ports. Okay. Okay, so we will check on that later. And right here, we will see what's inside. We have two M.2 SATA ports. Yes. And we have four memory module slot you yeah. just mentioned. So you can have maximum 40 by 64 giga. Yeah. For the DDR4. Yeah. And then we have a processor in the kind of the middle side. The processor. Yeah. Yes. The processor. Yeah, it's covered by a heat sink. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you just said the temperature is not a big kind of a problem. Okay, good. So uh, that is what was inside the, the machine, and we will show you later, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. So the next is we will tell you why the RDX and Blu ray disk pretty dark unit mask can be a complete storage solution. First, uh, after we install the RDX inside of the NAS, we can just directly read it inside of our QTS system, right? Yeah, because we know users, they don't like to so many complicated mm -hmm. settings, and um, uh, if I need to set, set it here, set it there, and set it here to begin to use the RDX, um, it's very simple to read the data inside the RDX cartridge. You just need to use the file station. So you can direct to uh, enter the cartridge and access the data. So it's like a plug and play device. Yeah, just plug in play and play. Mm -hmm. And after you write all your data inside of RDX, how can we find the file? And how can we, uh, because for, like you said, the media industry, mm -hmm. pictures and videos, all taken by the like the DV or the recorder, right? the mm -hmm. bigger recorder. And for all the data file from the DV or recorder, they were they will be all named by the in the same formula. Yeah. So if we want to find the right video or clip or the picture, it's very hard yeah. for us, especially when we need to rename that. So that is why we have Q filing 2.0 is upcoming now. It's upcoming in the next week. Next week or I think. Yeah. And then we have QSearch. Both of the QFiling and QSearch are very popular from QNet because the uh, sorting and uh, categorize and then for the searching function of this two app are, uh, we have some exclusive function. So if you want to know more, please subscribe our channel and you can use the keyword QFiling or QSearch to, subscribe, uh, to search in our channel and you will see more introduction of this of these two apps. So we'll just go to the next slide. <coughs> so please uh, intro introduce why we said it's a multi-layer protection. Okay, uh, as, uh, as we, we talk it again and again, mm -hmm. um, the most secure way to protect your data is to back up. Yes. So we we, uh, we combine the three ways into hybrid data sync. Mm -hmm. You can choose cloud backup. So, which means you can back up your data to clouds, uh, something like Amazon or Google, Google, Google Drive, something like that. Mm -hmm. Or you can just choose the traditional local backup. You can just connect the USB to your NAS and back up your data to a USB. And also, if you have a not connected NAS, you can choose remote backup. You can uh, back up your data to another NAS. So, 
more data, which means secure your data better, okay. of course. And uh, we, I, I see Linux right here. Why can we use Linux? Is that a, is that an icon for Linux? Yeah, it's a uh, for Linux and virtual machine. Okay. Uh, because in that hand side, I uh, why we choose RDS to implement to add eighty two BR mm -hmm. is because file station can write data to the RDS directly. You don't need to install other applications. You just use file station. Yes. Uh, but for the um, the for the disk. You need to install the mini station or virtual machine to download the cleaning uh, tools from uh, so parties. Okay, I so, see. Uh, so for RDA, it's more convenient than sure. this. Okay, okay, understand. So if you want more convenience, you just choose the RDX version. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to have, if you really want to have the Blu-ray, you just yeah. choose the ODD spec, right? Yeah, it depends on the requirement to data. Mm -hmm. Okay, then since we talk about uh, the mm -hmm. RDS can help you to archive big data and uh, why you need to use RDX to save your data for a longer, longer time or mm -hmm. any other situations that you might need to use the RDX. Then the next thing is we're going to talk about if you have this AA2 and you are going to use it to transmit a very big file, how can you speed up? How can you speed up? Right here. Well, first of all, uh, the AA2BR, since it has the uh, PCIe slot, yes. so it can install our 10G uh, card. 10G card or 40G 40, 40 card. Yeah. So with in that way you can use the high speed or the thunderbolt card. Yeah, and you can go with our new uh, uh ten gigabyte internet switch yes. QSW twelve zero eight and AC is already on the market. Yes, and please take care of, of our new switch because yeah. um, the price is very basically uh, the price is very good and yeah. you want to know more we have two skill cloud ports and a port and both of the two models can support as a quick plus and rj45 at the yeah. same time yeah. so if you want to know more also sub uh, just subscribe our channel and check the qsw as keyword inside of our channel you will see more about that and uh, also the price is very good yeah. And uh, for the computer, if your computer does not support the 10G port or the Thunderbolt, you can also choose our QXG 10G 1T card. It's also a PCI card, right? Yes, that's Just right. Just install that on your computer and then you can use the 10G transmission. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So this is how, can, how we can uh, speed up and upgrade your whole system, whole environment of your internet yeah. into a 10G speed. And then, now we're going to show you how to install RDX, the removable disk, and uh, what is the AA2 looks like, and uh, how can we control the cassette, right? Yes, that's right. So let's go to the first, this one, right? Okay, so... This is our AA2. This is the AA2 BR. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to back to see the back. Mm -hmm. And just remove the screws in advance to save time, so I just open the case. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So, uh, as I said, we have um, SATA port pre installed in mm -hmm. the machine, so we don't need to buy the SATA cable. Okay. Okay. So, I will show you how to install RDX. Uh, you can see this here is the um, uh, dust free cover, we just, we just remove it from sure. inside. Uh -huh. Okay, remove it. And this is uh, the RDX. Oh. Uh -huh. uh, this one is we will use into the model. Uh -huh. Okay, so just put it inside. Uh -huh. Connect the SATA. Yeah, it, it's a SATA cable here. Only one, right? Only, Only one. This one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just put it inside until the, the button mm -hmm. and then connect the SATA cable. Mm 
then we need to first turn two screws in the side. Okay, screw that up. Okay. Okay, I finished the installation. Cool, good. Yeah. And now you can start to using our RDX. And um, as I said here, this is a CPU fan, mm -hmm. so the temperature is always not to be a problem. So I just remove the, the CPU fan. Ah, and we have the uh, M.2 and the You can see two M.2 slots here. Mm -hmm. here. And four uh, memory channels. Here. Yeah, it's dual channel, so you can you can uh, insert to uh, four memory okay. modules here. Okay. Okay. And the CPU and the heatsink is right here. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Okay. And uh, here is the USB giga port and HDMI speaker out oh, and six point three millimeter three fan and. Uh, Gen 3x4, Gen 3x8, Gen 3x4. Two Gen 3x4 and one Gen 3x8. Okay. Here. Cool. Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, we like to introduce how to access the RDS cartridge. Of course. So, we have another machine for you, uh, which is, has been set up the RDS already. Yeah, it's right here. Okay. So, uh, we will invite our uh, PM Billy here. Uh, no, sorry, no, no, not yet. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, this is RDS. It's new. It's mm -hmm. whole new uh, RDS cartridge. So, okay. Sam, please insert the cartridge to the RDS. Okay, to the end. And we go to the computer. Like Sorry, uh, we go to the computer. We uh, sorry, uh, just give us some uh, one second because we have a little uh, condition right here, but we are coming back really soon. Mm -hmm. Oh, so Sam, uh, do you have friends working in the media industry? Well, yes, I do. Uh, I have for media industry. I don't quite sure because I have friends that they work in the like television, television. or something. Okay, I think that they are very. Uh, this, I think they know the RTS very well mm -hmm. because um. Sometimes when, when the data is very big and uh, you need to secure, yeah, yeah. So you need RDS is a very good option for you for mm -hmm. people in media industry. Of course, I would I can check with them if they have the uh, opportunity to use that or if they have the the demand to use that. Yeah, it's also because we have mm -hmm. ad base HDD, so which means the capacity is very big. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, still, we are uh, we are trying to uh, solve the problem right here. So, uh, uh, okay, we will do it. Uh, we will do it at the background. So uh, we will go back to our slides first. We go back to our slides first, and then uh, we will show you some traditional usage of the RDX, and then we will also show you how can we upgrade the whole system by the PBS AA two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's welcome our PMPD to yeah, so give our more information about the software. Yeah. So uh, Billy is also a PM in Puna that he handles the RDX and AA2 issue. So please let all the customer and the viewer know how can we upgrade from the traditional usage into a better usage. Okay, we can see here is the traditional usage for the video editing. We can see there are some working pro flow. Mm -hmm. That's one we will get the uh, image from the camera over the recorder. Yes. Or uh, and the save in the media as a server. Yes. Then 
some people will try to edit it to be what they wanted and then we will pass the review and the bit of finish it. yeah and then for the finish it to the delivery uh, maybe it's a different location so you need to transfer the data mm -hmm. so you might need to use the rdx to help to pass the data to yes. the deliver side yes yeah and uh, of course uh, for the usage you also need the share storage it may be the NAS or the stuff mm -hmm. and you also need to use the backup storage server yes. and also you need the backup backup so way and yes. we uh, we use the Archiveware P5 suite, which can provide a backup solution and the archive solution. Yeah. Oh my God, the cycle, the, the cycle is really complicated. Actually. Yes, yes, wow. and uh, you can see there are so many storage in the workflow. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, after changing to our RDX with AA to VR, how can we upgrade? Mm, yes, the and. Uh, QNAP A to BR integrator RDX mm -hmm. and uh, what's the trend? And uh, we can see that you don't need to use uh, uh, each RDX in each end, uh, end machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we integrate the RDX in our NAS, then mm -hmm. you can share the RDX for each end device to access it directly. Okay. Yeah, so you don't need the management so many devices. Okay. And uh, we also can so see there is a um, uh, backup storage in the left downside, uh, yeah, right. And the uh, uh, QNAP would like to provide all in one, one solution, so we also integrate the uh, Archiveware P5 in our NAS, so we can see in the next page. Okay, okay, so uh, QNAP also integrate the uh, Archiveware P5 suite to our NAS in this year. So mm -hmm. we can provide all in one backup and archive uh, appli uh, appli appliance in sure. our NAS. So mm -hmm. you can, we can use the NAS to, uh, <laughs> we can use the NAS to the, all the storage device in this kind of workflow. Yeah. And uh, we also provide a sample interface for you to get a uh, very fast and the efficiency access for the editing usage. Yeah. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, do we have, so I think right here we have also have some live demo, right? Yes. Uh, our our Archiware Archiware yeah. device. Yes. So it's also through our computer, right? Yes. Okay, so let's, let's go, go to the computer page. Okay. So, First, uh, I will have to ask them to to show us the the oh, sure. set, yeah. the oh, sure. RDX. So, okay. So just please. Okay. <coughs> so since then has installed the RDX cartridge, so you can see here is a notification here. So we can see here is the RDX uh, three hundred twenty twenty gigabytes cartridge inside. So. Uh, the first thing, because this is a whole new cartridge, so we need to initialize. So let's go to storage and snapshots and external storage. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we can see here. Okay. So we need to initialize this cartridge be, uh, before you use it. Yes. So just choose this cartridge and choose actions to format it. Uh, because uh, Billy will use uh, ext4 okay. in it uh, later, so I just choose ext4 sure. to be the cartridge format. Sure. So just format it. Uh, I choose OK. <coughs> and then we wait, right? Yeah, you wait and then you can start to use your cartridge. Yeah, because it's, I think it's already done. Yeah, it's already done. Faster than I think. Okay, so you can see here not a pop up notification mm -hmm. is complicated. Complicated. Mm -hmm. Okay, so same please uh, change the uh, the screen to here and okay. please eject the cartridge. Okay, just push the the right hand side button, the green this button. One? Yeah, this one right. Yeah, this one. Right? Yeah, just push it. <laughs> I'm quite <laughs> So I, I you like the sound, the traditional sound. Yeah, you I can, can do it again. Yeah. yeah, it's very good. Please push it. Ah, okay. Ah, you like the sound? Yes. <laughs> hey, don't do later again. <laughs> Why? 
it won't hurt. <laughs> okay, so uh, okay, yeah, please e uh, eject it because I have another another one who has stored many data inside the cartridge. Sure. So I will show you how to use the file station to access the data directly. I miss the sound. We can do it many times after work. Yeah. So now we need to go back to the computer, right? Yes. <clears throat> Still, we check everything in file station. Yeah. Or okay. So you can use file station to find every data. Okay. So, okay, the scene said that we have committed to the. Uh -huh. The cartridge. Yes. So from file station here, mm. you can see many data. I can find it mm -hmm. from file station. So you can uh, you can do some management of, to each data like rename, copy, delete, or cut. Mm. So it's very easy. Okay. So I just uh, let's go back to this demo. Mm. Or okay. So Billy, what will you show us like the the Archiware key file? Right? Yes, yes. First, the, the as we say, we already co-work with Archiware mm -hmm. uh, to integrate the uh, Archiware key file structure sure. in our NAS. So uh, the connect user can find uh, the Archiware in our application oh. center. Then mm -hmm. you can install it directly. Okay. Yeah, it wants to save a time, so I already do the pre-install in this NAS. Sure. Then we can take. This then, uh, mm. oh, it already the session occurred, so I need to login again. Sure. Yeah, then we can see the Archival provide three major functions. First one is the data backup and the data synchronize and the data archive. Sure. And this time we will demo how to uh, archive the data to the RDX. Of course. Yeah. Okay. First, uh, for the archive, we have to join the RDX to this system. Mm -hmm. So we have a click here and uh, add a removed disk. Sure. Okay, then uh, we can see the RDX already in this system. Okay, then select it. Okay, okay then apply. Okay, then the disk already be added to the archiveware. Mm -hmm. So wait, then we can select the menu archive. Then we can select the local data in our NAS. And also, uh, if you have a client machine joined to this application, okay. Then I already put some uh, image file in this NAS. Then we can archive the folder to the RDX. Okay, okay. then we select the folder and the push your archive and then click start. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we can go to the job monitor and you can see it already connected to the NAS and the device. Okay, okay. Wait a, uh, just wait a moment. Then it already start to transfer the data. Yeah, sure. okay, and then you can see it already complete. Uh -huh. I see. Yes, okay, so when you want to uh, look you store the archive data, we can come to here. Mm -hmm. Then you can see all the data already be uh, right. yeah, okay. archived in here. Yeah. And if you want to uh, protect the data in offsite, you can just reject uh, reject the RDX. Put okay, them reject the, the RDX and, and put it in the place which you think the set okay. to protect your data. I see. Yeah. Okay. So okay. this is how can uh, our NAS work with RDX and the application are uh, aware, right? Yes. Okay, so this is the demo for you today. Yes. Thank you, Billy. And then, so we go back to our uh, slides here. And uh, okay, now we see the A2, and now we know how to use the RDX and the Archiware P5, which you can download in our app center. Now we can check for the other function, like we have three 4K UHD output in HDMI. So also, we have the M.2 SATA that you can install too. So after you install the M.2 SATA, which each can support 6 giga, right? 6 giga, yes, that's right. And we can use it for uh, SSD cache. Yeah. And also, we can use it for QT. Yeah, sure, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, it's built into M.2 SATA SSD ports. And uh, you, if you think you want to more SSD, 
uh, you can choose our QN2 card. Mm -hmm. uh, it's connection from PCIe. So if you want to the more extra four and two SSD, you can choose QN2 four S uh, series. If you want to uh, the extra two and two SSD and with a ten gigabyte port, mm -hmm. you can choose our QN2 two S one uh two S ten T one T or okay. QN2 two P one two P ten T one T. Of course, yeah. Then we have uh other kinds of the expansion device if you are interested in it uh, subscribe our channel and search for uh, expansion in our channel we have one video that can clearly uh, explain in all the expansion devices okay. that we have so uh, here are the diverse storage scenarios for the PCI swap mm -hmm. like we can use the wireless network card or if you want more USB card uh, USB slots or you want to have more 10 gig uh, the, the, for the NIC yes you can all use our expansion card to create your own uh, scenario and uh, to fit your own satisfaction for for your demand right yeah that's right Mm -hmm. uh, you can choose, uh, we have three kinds of uh, 10 gigabytes card. Yes. Uh, the first one is QXG 10 g one t is mm -hmm. NBST connected. So it supports 5 speed, uh, 10 g uh, 5 g 2.5 g and 1 g and 100 megabytes. Yes. Uh, also, we have very popular 10 g 2 t X5, uh, F5, 550. And uh, it's a it's a RJ forty five connector. Okay. And also we have a LED ten P two SF MLX. It's a SP plus connector. Okay. And also, uh, I think we have introduced the wireless station before. Yeah. So like several days ago. So if you want to know more about our wireless station. Yeah, so <coughs> for L eighty two PR, you can connect a, a new wireless network card to yes. make your TVS at 82 pr to become a wireless base station yes yeah. and then the next is that you can uh, we have a remote control in the that's bundled package. yeah in the, in the official uh, package is bundled okay. okay good and then okay we still need to tell you about our QBR Pro because surveillance is really important especially when you are using such a high level Finet NAS Mm -hmm. And you can try to use our QBR Pro, uh, QBR Pro, which has eight free IP camera channels for you. you just download it and you can create your own uh, QBR Pro platform. And you try to use our uh, surveillance solution to see if it's fit for you. And as long as it's IP camera, you can try because we support more than 5,000 uh, IP cameras in the market. Well, and if you think HNL is not enough, you can uh, purchase the license online. And uh, for this machine, you can have 182 maximum channels. Okay? Yes. Also, it supports QUSB 10 too. Like if you have the Web 10, you can just connect that Web 10 through the USB 2.0 uh, into the Web panel of the AA2 so that you can uh, turn your USB Web 10 into an IP camera. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> Also, you can use the VJ bar function to uh, to to take the space from other Kinect NAS. NAS. Yeah. Kinect NAS. yeah. So if you have so many uh, many Kinect NAS, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, not every NAS you you will use all the, the capacity. Yes. So if you use the virtual J bar, you can get uh, the capacity from other Kinect NAS to become your own. Yes, yeah. through iSCSI. And yeah, through iSCSI. virtual JPA is in that exclusive function. Yeah, sure. Of course. And then the conclusion right here, we're going to tell you why we so uh, why we want you to use AA2. First, it has RDX, so if you are in some industry that you want to transfer your data without internet connection, mm -hmm. choose RDX and Blu-ray burner. Yes. And then it supports Thunderbolt 3 and 3 HDMI output. Yeah. And then it has a built-in M.2 SATA uh, ports, so you can install two. And if you think it's not enough, we still have uh, PCI yeah. slots yeah. and QM2 card and all the other expansion cards that you can choose. Yeah. And then uh, it has a powerful, powerful performance because is i i7 and i5 yeah i7 and i5 yeah ddr can support maximum 64 yes uh, that is a very good capacity of the hardware so uh these five main points are why we suggest you to 
use the TBSA2 if you want to have a really high level of your NAS. Okay, so that is today's video, and thank you for watching. And let's go back to life. And thanks again, Dan and Billy, you bring us such a, a wonderful uh, introduction of the TBSAA2. And all the viewers, if you like our video, please subscribe our channel, and we will have more videos for the hardware, software, or we will teach you how to use each of our apps and unboxing videos in our uh, in our channel. So, uh, can you like broadcast? We will see you next time. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. bye. bye.